Let's talk more about the impact of rates on the U.S. housing market. And for that, we're joined by Ken H. Johnson. Uh, he is a real estate economist at Florida Atlantic University. Again, thanks for joining us. We certainly appreciate it. I want to kind of get right to it and talk about the cost of buying a home in the United States. And, uh, you know, you hear it, especially from younger, the, the younger generation, that the, the chance of buying a home, the cost of uh, home ownership, uh, the long reaching effects, simply out of reach for many American families. Do you think that's the case? It's certainly more out of reach today, excuse me, than it was just a few years ago. A couple of things are going on. We have record high prices in, in, in terms of homes and where we want to live. Also, our financing costs are, have become nearly record levels in the last 20 years. So when you combine high costs and high financing, it's difficult to get into that first home. But we've seen tougher times before. Okay, we have seen tougher times. I remember, what, late 70s? I think it went up to 16, 17, 18 percent uh, to try to get a, a loan to, to, to purchase a home. But let's talk about now. You did mention what is driving the cost of ownership up higher. How does somebody combat all of that information? I mean, you realistically have to put 20% down, and then you're saddled with more than 7% for the foreseeable future. So historically, what happens when you have a surge in the demand for home ownership, for example, we have a lot of people moving into the, the southeastern parts of the country. The, the construction just can't happen fast enough. So you'll see a rise in prices, which is exactly what we're seeing. And then you see an increase in density because it is expensive. And by that, I mean the average number of people living per unit will go up. So the old days of the Golden Girls, the sitcom, <laughs> that just wasn't a sitcom. It was a real life reaction to high home prices. Wow, uh, that's something when you put it that bluntly. Okay, and people had hoped that the Fed was gonna drop uh, its interest rates four, five, even six times this year. Now they're talking about possibly not at all this year. So what, when do people realistic, realistically expect rates are going to get, go down? And do you believe that it's gonna get worse before it gets better or are we at the tip of the iceberg now? So it might get a little worse. The Fed is worried about inflation being baked into housing. Housing is a major component of the measurement of inflation. So higher interest rates slows down the price of housing so we might see a little higher interest rates, but I do think we're in for a significant downturn in our interest rates, but we're looking out over the horizon of 18 or 24 months before we get back down to that four, four and a half percent range. In the meantime, there'll be a stair step down as, as, as mortgage rates slowly go down, the economy mm. will not overheat. And if it starts to overheat, the Fed will get aggressive and you'll hear discussion from the Fed about raising rates, which will push mortgage rates back up. And let's talk about the rental market, because I know that really spiked at the end of last year. But from all indications, it's, it's gotten a little bit better. Is that still the case? Absolutely. Across the country right now, almost half the markets have seen year over year increases of less than three, three and a half percent in terms of rent. This has come back to a normal range. Many parts of the country are renting at a discount compared to long term rental trends. However, that does not change the fact that our rents are still high relative to our income. But the rapid and dramatic rent increases that we saw two, one, two, and three years ago, those have really slowed. And it's gotten back to that normal range of 3 to 5% per year in terms of rent increase. You know, Ken, this is out of your wheelhouse just a bit. Um, so if it's not something you want to ch uh, chat about, but the homeless issue that we did talk about, I think that that story kind of pointed out a couple of things. Obviously, mental illness is, is one of the big contributors to people being homeless. But what about those families who simply can't afford to buy a house or have been uh, thrust out on the street? Uh, if it does become a crime uh, to be homeless, I mean, how are you going to, it's going to be very difficult to get a house because almost every little thing sticks to your financial record. And it's going to be very difficult to pick yourself up by your own bootstraps. Sure, it, it is pretty much out of my wheelhouse, but I will try and address it. Homelessness is always an issue with the peak of housing cycles. Now, in other words, we're at the top of, all, all indications are that we're at the top of the cycle. So homelessness always increases then, and it stays with us until we see either incomes rise or home prices or rental prices flatten out. So this is something that's pretty tragic. I was shocked to hear that this could be made a crime. I, I, I'm not aware of that, but this is something that is not a market-driven solution. This is something that the states and the federal government will have to come together 
and address in the U.S. Well, for being out of your wheelhouse, I think you knocked it out of the park. Good answer, and we certainly appreciate your time. Thanks so much, Ken. We always appreciate it. Always enjoy it, Sean. Take care.